Yo, what's going on, everybody, man? It's your boy, Marcus Elbow. Welcome to Elbow Media Studios, iOS music app spotlight. Well, over here, we take a look at the apps, whether they're new or they're old, but we spotlight those apps just in case you're new to the iOS ecosystem and you're trying to find out what are the cool music-making apps that you want to get into, and we're going to try to help you get into that as quick as possible. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Chord Gadget. This is a pretty cool uh it's not, I'm not going to say it's a DAW. It is a music creation app. And what's really cool about this is that they have all of these cool little gadgets that you can work with. All these different drum machines, synthesizers, and things like that that are inside of their ecosystem. So if you did not know, Core Gadget is not an AUV3. You cannot use this inside of other apps. This is its own ecosystem. So if you want to get new sounds, you can go through their system, their store, buy new gadgets, buy new sounds, things like that. And it comes with abundance of sounds. And and the price is a, little, is a little up there, but it's a pretty cool app. And let me show you what makes it so cool. When you first boot it up, this is what you're gonna kind of you're gonna kind of be greeted with this little. Uh, screen here and, and i'm not gonna lie to you when i first booted this up i thought it was a little bit confusing i didn't really know where to go from here and i was like oh what what is this okay so let's go through the ui like we always do just to make sure you're not confused we're going to start with the top left over here if you hit this little button over here as you can see there vaguely you have new open import uh save save as and export okay and the next one is uh, kind of like, I guess, your connection to the users that uses Core Gadget. I think that's pretty cool to where you can upload your beats and people can actually listen to them. You can follow different artists, different producers, and you can listen to their tracks and you can like them and things like that. That's pretty dope. I thought that was pretty cool. The next one is just information about Core Gadget gadget the actual app you'll see what version you're using uh you can actually see what apps that are out if they have some new apps come in you know different things that you can buy different modules things like that if you can see that okay now moving downward here is going to be your scenes and once we start getting started you will see that scenes will start to populate across the screen as you start creating tracks okay this plus button is how you add another scene and this little bitty double box here is how you just duplicate different scenes okay right over here to your right is going to be how you look at your mixer this will bring your mixer up that's pretty self-explanatory the other cog wheel to your right of that mixer is going to be some of your different options and different settings that you can set up if you want to and then of course the question mark is going to be where you can help you can find out you can use a manual and with those those things like that but you got me so you don't need the manual okay all right so down here at the bottom here you have your master and then you have your your play function uh here the transport functions you have your tempo and then you have this little box here this little box here is where you're going to get started boom just like that now we have court gadget up and this is where all of the gadgets live now i'm not going to lie to you when i first seen this i thought that was pretty dope i'm looking at all of these vibrant graphics and i'm looking at all these machines and i'm like oh wow i can't wait to dig in to some of these sounds so the way it works is you can pick any one of these gadgets you like then they have some that are at the bottom here that you actually have to pay for if you want to start adding to your court and your gadget collection but the one Ones that do not have any prices on the side of them are ones that you can use for free okay so let's just go ahead and jump into the London here okay now as you can see I have the London here and I also have a box here which is telling me that's where my pattern lives and as you start to create more patterns the patterns will start to form going in this direction okay so let's go ahead and hit the London down here when you do that then it brings up your actual gadget here okay which is pretty cool and if you double tap the gadget you can get the full screen of the gadget in case you want to play around you want to look at some things let's just check a few things out bet, 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 bet. 
Right, that's pretty cool. And what I really like about the gadgets, they sound real clean and crisp. Cord has really done their due diligence when it comes to making sure that the sounds are perfect. They're great, and that way you don't really feel like you have to go out of their ecosystem in order for you to get to get to what you need to get to. Okay, so I'm not going to go over every gadget. That's not what I'm going to do here. But what I'm going to show you is that every gadget that you boot up has its own interface so if i want to go change my drum kit i can just push this here and i can go here as you can see and i can darken up the screen if need be and i can just change my my uh my my kits right there right and i can just go grab any type of kit that i want we got something called chill wave here Right. And if you double click again, you can get back to your sequencer. And that's really what you got going here. This is your step sequencer. Now, it's a different a couple of different ways you can do this. You can actually play them in live. Or you can actually go in and draw in whatever you want to draw in. So it gives you that option to actually do it free formally or you can use a step sequencer. First thing that you're going to want to know how to do is you're going to want to know how to add your bars. And if you can look up here at the top, you may can't see that, but it says one bar up here at the top. Now, if you want to add another bar, there is a little bitty icon sitting right over here. If you hit that icon, you can add a bar. And what you just seen was now. I have two bars now okay and if you hit it again you can add another bar another bar so forth and so on okay now if you want to go ahead on and start making the track it is very easy to do that down here at your, with your play control functions right you have a few different things down here you have your tempo down here if you click on that you can tap in your tempo you can turn on your metrodome you can add some swing that's pretty cool and then you have some other functions like solo mute and undo undo is going to be something that you're going to really need to look look at if you want to start you know undoing and making sure you're correcting some of the problems that you're running into okay right here is your actual loop button right here you already know this is your play stop and record and another button that you're going to really, really, really need to always go back to, okay, is going to be your function button. Your function button opens up all different type of things. You can actually change your bars here at the top using your function button. You can have play mode. It can be a one shot as if you had a riser or something like that. Uh, you have your mute button and then you have your grid here. Really, is is just a way that you could apply your different sounds or your different lanes or whatever you you're doing when your step sequencer and it really dictates the grid dictates how you're going to lay some of that stuff down and also it probably has a lot to do with the quantize as well you have some different things over here for midi as well you can clear your notes clear automation copy and some of those things but the function is pretty cool because the function works on all different areas because if i hit the back button here and i go back to the you know song or sequence mode this is the true sequence mode where you're going to see your songs and all your tracks playing at once if you hit that function again it's going to give you some options here to delete to copy to you know duplicate and do some things like that so and you also can change whatever you're doing here if i didn't want the london i can actually hit change right there and find another uh chord gadget that i would like to use but we're going to stick with london we're going to go back into the london actual sound and then we're going to try to just throw something in real quick so that you can see how to record okay so let's just go ahead on and tap something in let me just play something real quick Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tempo and I'm gonna tap that in. Boom, boom, tap, boom, 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 tap, boom, 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 tap, right? Once I tap that in, I'm gonna hit my metrodome button here, okay? And once I hit that, then all I have to do is hit record. It's gonna give me a one bar count in. Now we can easily go in and turn that off. We can go here and we can zoom in so we can see all of our MIDI data. Sound like we were off a little bit. We could easily draw another one in and take that one out. Then we can go down here and we can undo. 
or we could just erase it all together. Now, what's really great is if we want to continue to start adding more sounds, we could do that. All we have to do is hit record. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. That's a little off, but we're not really worried about that. But what I want to show you, if I go back, now you see that pattern that I just created, right? So if I want to go back in, let's go ahead and stop that. I'm going to go back. And now you can see that pattern. All I have to do is hit this button right here, which is the plus button. Go grab me another gadget, and then I can continue working. We can grab us a, a, a Marcel, and then if we go here. We can start adding in more sounds here. And the, this one is just the same as the London. You can go in and change your sounds. And as you can see, these gadgets are fully functional as far as things that you can do. You can go in here and change the envelope, the output. You can put effects and things like that. As you can see here, um, we got some keys here. Let's just find something that sounds a little better than that. And if you want to go here, you can hit the chord button. So it's already on. You can go into different scales if you want it to. Change your octaves. Which is pretty dope. Double click on it again. That gets you back here. If, you, if we go back, you can continue to keep adding different devices as you go and creating a track this way, which is super, super cool. Once you, I mean, it's it's a great system. When you first look at it, you're kind of like, wait a minute. I don't know if I like the way this is. But I guarantee you, once you get accustomed to working inside of the ecosystem, inside of the way Core Gadget handles its sequences and its, its uh, patterns, you will find it not to be too difficult. It's just a different way of doing things. And to show you what I'm talking about, I will go ahead on and open a track that I've already done. Let's go ahead and open up this track and let me kind of show you what you can do with this. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you here. Let's start our first scene. And if you pay close attention, you can see that I have some of my tracks muted there. Okay. This is pretty cool because if we just go inside of, we can see that all of our notes are playing here, just like I was just telling you before, and I'm using different gadgets to accomplish that. And if I back in here, you can see here where all of my MIDI notes are there, and I just use some different gadgets to make that happen. And really, to be honest, the sequencer is actually pretty cool the way that you can do it because it's very simple. Let's just say if I have this track here and this is the full track, I don't have anything muted. Here I have tracks two, three, and four muted. On this on this sequence or this scene, I have track one and I have, uh, it looks like I have one and three uh, muted here. It may just be one, right? So let's just say I wanted to continue working on that. I wanted some different type of breakdowns. It would be just as easy as me. I'm already highlighted on this track, right? If you wanted to duplicate this track here, I could hit function here and hit duplicate, and then it's going to duplicate that track. Now I have two of the same instances of that track.
Okay, so that's pretty much the actual sequencer or song mode in a nutshell. I mean, as you start to create tracks, you will start to populate patterns that will all play together. If you want to change some of your breakdowns, you can duplicate that, mute, delete, clear, whatever you want to do inside of the function uh, button, as I've been telling you all about before. Now, if you want to get into the mixer, that's even easier because all you have to do we showed it to you earlier is hit the button here now you have the mixer if i go ahead and push play now you can see we can go in here and do some of the same things i can mute here let's go ahead and solo now what's really cool is also I can go in and I can add effects as well. If I hit this effects button right down here in the mute, near the mute, right under the mute, I can go in and I can add some different things. On the front of it, I have a compressor. If you can see that, if I hit this other button, I can go in and add whatever I want. Let's just say I wanted to add some reverb to that, as you could hear it. Now, if I want to edit that reverb, all I have to do is hit this little edit button, and then I have some different options here to go in and edit if I want to change the size. Change the level. Or I can just hit this little power button and turn it off. got a little button right here if I hit that FX button that'll take me back I got this on solo we could take it off a of solo and you know what it's not a lot to it man like I was telling you guys before you know and you also can start adding you can be in the mixer section here and then you can actually use this to scroll down if you have a lot of data or a lot of lanes or a lot of scenes. But you can actually go right here and continue to create tracks from the mixer view if that view makes you more comfortable. But I'm telling you, Core Gadget is a pretty cool, cool uh, music creation tool. It's, I'm not going to sit up here and say that it's for everybody. I'm not going to say that because it's not for everybody. Some people, like myself, like to be able to do some different things, add different things things and bring in outside sources and things like that and if i'm missing that on here please get down in the comments and let me know but again these spotlights is for me really just to show you real quick how you can get started what these apps are about and what they represent all right so that's what's up man this is your boy marcus elbow this has been elbow media studios y'all already know how we get down so yo get at me man don't forget to hit that sub button all right 75% of y'all that watch these videos don't hit that sub button. Don't act like y'all ain't think I ain't know. I'm going to holler at y'all in a minute, man. Catch y'all in the next video, all right? I am out of here. Peace.